All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do my best to try to not get as much hate on this video as I possibly can. But I will be talking about some sell high options, players that we are going to be looking to move off of our teams. Now, the first thing I want to cover will be the sell high players from last week. Jamison Williams was our first sell high. He did nothing this week. Jamison, no longer a sell high candidate because you aren't going to get anything for him. Probably shouldn't cut him just yet, though, because he did have six targets in this game. Jacoby Myers was that other guy, and with Myers, worried about the Jimmy Garoppolo injury, if you were looking at his targets with and without Jimmy G, well, Myers has a great week with no Jimmy Garoppolo, and I'm man enough to admit it, I was probably wrong here with Jacoby Myers, probably shouldn't have looked to sell him high. Javante Williams, we were just talking about the fact that, yeah, maybe he is the starting running back in Denver, but ultimately it's going to be very hard to be productive enough to start in fantasy, whatever. At the end of the day, you are in a three-man running back by committee in one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Javante didn't really do anything this past week. Looks like it may be a little bit tougher to sell him. DK Metcalf was that sell high candidate before he was up on the injury report, before we knew he was going to miss the week. We were essentially saying, okay, well, Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to come on as the season progresses with Metcalf over the past three years. He's really been that consistent high end wide receiver three, low end wide receiver two. But typically, what I see in live streams every single night is that people can go out there and sell him as a high end wide receiver two. Honestly, I think that maybe this is the week where I can't say to go out there and sell Metcalf because I do feel like the tides are turning. I feel like I've seen a lot more people going out there and starting to realize this. Kyron Williams was that next player. We were saying this before he was placed on IR. We're essentially saying two things. One, I'm afraid the ankle injury is a little more serious than people are letting on. That turned out to be true way before the week even played out. The man went to the IR. And two, I think that with Kyron Williams missing time, I think it opens up the window for another running back in Los Angeles not to take the starting job in the long term, but instead to insert him where it's a running back by committee in the long term. So yeah, I mean, with Kyron, I'd still say if you are a team that's maybe like two and five right now where we need points ASAP, I'm going to be looking to sell him low at this point. Terry McLaurin, that other guy, primarily just worried about Washington. When you have Curtis Samuel, when you have John Dotson both getting involved as well, it's hard to just see so many wide receivers getting targets without bad Sam Howell's Ben. And then that last player we were talking about was Alvin Kamara in a half PBR league or a non PBR format. Probably wrong. Looks like even in a half PBR league, Alvin Kamara is going to see so many targets that at the end of the day, it may not matter because if you're getting 10 receptions, that's still five points in a half PBR our league honestly still probably look to go out there and see if we can sell him I currently have him ranked as my RB 10 rest of season so it all does come down to the price point that you are going to get but in that non PBR format please still look to sell Alvin Kamara he is a very inefficient running back at this point in a pretty bad offense and you're going to get vultured rushing touchdowns this past week it was from Taysom Hill I'm also worried about that potentially being Jamal Williams down the road but now let's go over and look at some sell eye players for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Starting off with our first name, we are going to be looking at Deonta Foreman. Must start guy for us last week, primarily because Hookem Lawrence, no, all jokes aside, you have no Roshan, you have no Khalil Herbert. Then obviously Foreman's just going to be in line for a massive workload, similar to what we had last year with Foreman as that Carolina Panther. And he went from being a player that wasn't even active in football games to this past week going out there and scoring three touchdowns, having 120 total yards, five targets, 16 carries. The prettiest workload you could ever see. Now the issue projecting this out going forward is, Okay, well, we know Khalil Herbert's not going to miss the rest of the season, right? Khalil Herbert will be back. Herbert's been on the IR for two weeks at this point. And on top of this, ladies and gentlemen, if you are looking at Roshan Johnson, if you eventually get Roshan Johnson back into this offense, then all of a sudden it looks like this is not going to be a situation where Foreman is seeing 16 carries and five targets. I think that Foreman probably has to be the running back that you rank as the RB1 here in Chicago, but he's going to be in a running back by committee in one of the worst offenses in the NFL where Roshan should be the guy getting to work as the receiver. So I have Foreman ranked, I believe, as our RB36 rest of season on flockfantasy.com, something around there. If I can sell him as a high-end RB3 even, I'm out. Great to be able to start him last week. If Roshan misses again this week, you maybe have one more week with Deonta Foreman starting. But in reality, it's just going to be a muddied mess from here on out. 
Now, going over to someone that full transparency, I have in no leagues, so I'm very biased when we talk about him. Darren Waller is a sell for us for the first time since coming into the season. Y'all know coming into the year, we got so much hate saying to fade the Darren Waller hype. And with Waller, he's done a great job of staying healthy, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, the one thing that people always said going about with Darren Waller is just the proneness for him to miss time where he's played every single game this week and he's had a considerable amount of target volume as well. Darren Waller is sitting with 49 total targets this season and he's had 380 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown. So if anything, typically what I would do is I would look at this kind of volume and I'd say, oh, okay, well, you know what? Let's actually go out there and let's buy low on said player. Let's go grab the guy that may see a reversion with his touchdown rate where instead of scoring a touchdown on two percent of his targets maybe instead of that goes up to eight percent maybe even seven percent six percent close to the league average then he's going to be much better in the second half you kind of saw that this past week where he does have almost 100 receiving yards in the receiving touchdown against washington and gives you 20 fantasy points beautiful spot but it was also the easiest matchup you could ever ask for the Giants are a team that's still at the end of the day, I don't want to say are tanking, but they're not really playing for anything. We don't know when we are going to be getting Daniel Jones back in. And if we're looking at what we have projecting the Giants going forward, if you're looking at Las Vegas Sportsbooks, they currently have the Giants at five and a half total wins for their win total, minus 145 to the under. So most people are coming out saying the Giants maybe win three more games. Maybe, maybe they win four more, but most people are saying only two or three more. So you're looking at an aging tight end that historically speaking has dealt with injuries as playing on a team that's playing for nothing, that has an injured quarterback, that's coming off a game where, I mean, hell, he did great, but it was in the best matchup possible. Probably going to be something that I am looking to make our move off of. Now, let's go over to Travis Etienne. And I want to be very brief on Travis Etienne because I know that... <sighs> We are going to get a lot of hate for this, and I completely understand why, right? ETN's been phenomenal, and it seems like every single person who watches the videos at this point has Travis ETN because he has been on a buy low videos for us after week one, after week two, after week three, after week four. Could not shut up about this guy. He was one of my most drafted running backs in fantasy this season. However, with ETN, this type of production may not be sustainable as... A touchdown score okay now hear me out if you are looking at Travis Etienne the things that I love about this profile which is why I have Travis Etienne on so many teams I love the work as a receiver I love the fact that he's a three down workhorse in a good offense on his rookie contract and getting work in the red zone this is the exact profile of a running back that we are going for and 100% I still love Travis Etienne rest of season there are just two running backs in particular that I'm now seeing people in our live streams try to get a little aggressive saying that they would rather have ETN over in Austin Eckler and Tony Pollard. Now, a couple different things that we can look at projecting these three running backs out. The first I want to talk about is the fact that with these two other running backs in Tony Pollard and Austin Eckler, these are running backs that are already through their bye weeks where you're going to be getting an extra week from them going forward, whereas ETN has not gone through his buy. And at this time of the year, that's actually a pretty big difference, right? Because say your fantasy football playoffs start in weeks 14. So you're looking at weeks 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, unless maybe your playoffs start in weeks 15. I, I'm losing my mind here. You got six or seven games left of the regular season. So having an extra game is actually going to make a pretty big difference on that front. And then also, if you're looking at the workload for Tony Pollard, I mean, as a receiver, it's almost more consistent than what you have as ET, with ETN. And then the same thing with Austin Eckler. Now, 100%, I understand with Eckler is very disappointing this past week. However, if we are going to be projecting out Eckler going forward, and coming from someone who has so much Travis ETN in drafts, who had no Austin Eckler, I think the Eckler situation is better. I think he's in a better offense. I think he has a larger target share in set offense, given the complete flame out of Quentin Johnston, plus the fact that we have the injury to Mike Williams, 
where I'm more confident with the receiving volume you're going to get from Eckler. And if you're looking at, say, underdog pickums, they don't necessarily have Travis Etienne up there as like the RB3 rest of season, right? They have Travis Etienne currently at 86 and a half total yards with a very safe projection from a week to week perspective. I, I still love Etienne. I have him ranked as a top five running back rest of season, but I do think that I would honestly pivot over to like Bijan Robinson. I think that honestly, I'd pivot over to Austin Eckler. Tony Pollard, and it pains me to say because I have more Travis Etienne on my teams than I do any of those other running backs. He scored six touchdowns over the past three weeks. This stuff is not sustainable. And real quick, if you want to check out those pickums over on Underdog, I actually kind of like the Bijan Robinson for more than 80 and a half total yards this week. And just in case you didn't see our pickum slip in the last video, my favorite pickum slip that we're going to have right now will be Josh Allen to at least have one yard. Yes, if you use promo good flock on Underdog, you're at least going to have one special pickum this week. That's either going to be the Josh Allen special pickum on Thursday if you're new to Underdog Fantasy. Or honestly, you're going to get both. You're going to get the Amon Ross St. Brown special pick them all Monday night as well if you use code FLOCK. But also, if you use code FLOCK two years ago, last year, yesterday, today, tomorrow, they're going to everybody up with a FLOCK exclusive Amon Ross St. Brown Monday night. So regardless, use your special pick them. Then pair that up with Jordan Love, Christian Watson for fewer than 231 in app passing yards and 58 and a half receiving yards. And then Bijan Robinson, more than 80 and a half total yards. I'm going to be going $10 to win $100 with that pick'em slip. And if you want those special pick'ems, a 100% deposit match, plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers, you can find that link in the description in the comment section. Only going to get all that with code FLOCK. But moving over to our next running back, this guy is not nearly as exciting as Travis Etienne. Obviously, you're going to get a much lower price tag. Brian Robinson looks like he's kind of being phased out here with Brian Robinson, a running back that earlier in the season, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's going to be great. I actually want Brian Robinson on as many teams as I can possibly get because early in the year, you were seeing 19 carries, 18 carries, consistent targets out of the backfield as well, where you were looking at two targets week one, three targets week two, and you were seeing him just dominate snaps. Well, that has completely changed, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, over the past three weeks, you're looking at Brian Robinson with a total of 24 carries over the past three weeks, seven targets over the past three weeks. He has still been fine in fantasy, just given the fact that he's going out there and he has scored, I mean, a ton of touchdowns this season. He's actually had six touchdowns on the year. This touchdown rate's not going to be sustainable, especially if you're playing in a very bad Washington Commanders offense. If you're looking at how the snaps are trending this past week, you actually had Brian Robinson falling under 50% of the snaps in Washington with Gibson seeing 26 and Chris Rodriguez seeing nine. So yeah, I am going to be very much worried about Brian Robinson. Obviously, you're not going to get a ton for him. It's not like the ETN call where we're saying go sell him for Eckler. But more so, if I can just sell him at a low-end RB2 price tag, I'd be fine. I would love to pivot over instead to Rashad White over to James Cook if that would be a possibility. Now, going over to our next player, I do want to look at George Kittle here just for a second. With George Kittle, this is a tight end that we had a, a buy low candidate back after the first few weeks this year where you were looking at Kittle going out there and giving you 4.9 points in week one, six points in week two. And I was sitting there going, okay, yeah, Kittle's going to give you nothing for a while. Then he's going to have that massive spike up. Then he's going to give you nothing for a while. Then he's going to have that massive spike up. I still stand by that. I still think that's the exact same situation here in San Francisco. Now, you did see the overall spike come this week with the seven targets, 78 receiving yards, and two weeks ago when the man had three receiving touchdowns. But at the same time, a lot of this has coincided with the injuries to Debo Samuel, where if you were looking at games that Debo Samuel's missed, George Kittle clearly has just been a better option in fantasy. I mean, it's understandable, right? I mean, these book guys both operate closer to the line of scrimmage. You have an incredibly low A dot specifically for Debo Samuel. So naturally, if Debo misses, Kittle will be better. If we're looking at what we've had over the past two seasons now from George Kittle in games where Debo Samuel's played, you've had George Kittle averaging 10 and a half points per game with only five targets per game. Whereas in games where Debo Samuel's missed, you've had George Kittle averaging 18 and a half points per game and six and a half targets per game, a difference in receiving yards per game by 30. So he's a night in difference in terms of the player that he is. If Debo Samuel's coming back anytime soon, I think we should be a little bit worried. 
And then I will be very brief on these next two guys. I've seen some people hyping up Cam Akers now that it looks like maybe he's taking a little bit more work than Alexander Madison. And yeah, Akers had 10 carries compared to Alexander Madison at eight this week. In reality, and we said this once they got traded, neither running back is good enough to be effective in a committee. If either Alexander Madison or Cam Akers had 80% of the snaps, 90% of the snaps, then you have to start them based off volume. However, if they're splitting this 40-60, 50-50, 60-40, it doesn't matter what the split is. If it's realistically any type of committee, neither one of these guys will be startable. They're forever going to be in that like Tyler Algier mold where like, okay, if you really need to start one, you do it. In reality, you're really just rostering them as handcuffs, right? You can roster Alexander Madison at the bottom of your bench. And if Akers goes down, then Madison's great. You can roster Cam Akers at the bottom of your bench. And if Madison goes down, then Akers is great. But as they're both fully healthy, these guys are holding on to roster spots just with a small little strand blowing in the wind. So, I mean, if you could send them in a deal just as a little sweetener and get an upgrade anywhere else, I think that would make sense. But I think that's all I have for you. If you enjoyed this video, please go down there, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And of course, if you wanted to check out any of those pickums, like I said, my pickum slip that I'm going to be looking at this week will be Josh Allen or Amon Ross St. Brown, more than less than half a total yard. You're going to get both those if you're new to underdog with code flock. You only have the St. Brown one if you've been on underdog for a while with code flock. Then Jordan Love, Christian Watson for fewer than 231 and a half passing yards, for fewer than 58 and a half receiving yards, and then Bijan Robinson more than 80 and a half total yards. Ten dollars gonna get you a hundred there. And also, if you're not already on Underdog, promo good flock, 100% deposit match, plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers, and those special pick So make sure you take advantage. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you. Really hope you enjoyed the video, and really hope I get to see you out in the live stream later tonight.